Hello, everyone, and welcome back to episode 88 of The Brainstorm. Not the usual intro from Sam. We're going to go ahead and record without him uh, to make sure this gets scheduled and stays on time for everyone. We have a very, very exciting show. Even without Sam, we have uh, Frank on, who's been on the show a number of times. We're going to be doing a live demo today. We're going to be showing... um, what it is like to vibe code or code with agentic capabilities. Um, I think a few of us in the office have had recent experiences uh, with coding agents and and assistance in coding. I, for one, have had an aha moment. I really can't uh, compare to maybe anything else in my career at ARC uh, using some of this technology. Um, so I'm just going to kick it right to Frank. We'll get right into this. We'll do a live demo. So if you're listening on Spotify or one of the other channels and can't get in front of a screen, I recommend you try to. We'll do the best we can to try to explain this as it goes. But um, if you want to watch, I uh, definitely recommend YouTube. Um, you'll see this all happen in real time. All right, Frank, let's do it. All right. And super topical. You know, um, I think agentic coding or AI assisted software development. Um, You're hearing a lot more about it because companies are deploying these coding agents. They're growing. Cursor is probably the most popular one just raised at a $9 billion valuation. Their competitor windsurf is rumored to be being acquired by OpenAI and for $3 billion Uh, and replit, um, which uh, full transparency is a company held by the arc venture fund and also a product used at arc uh, is also reportedly raising at $3 billion. Um, And I think sometimes you get, can get lost in exactly what does agentic coding mean? It sounds like a buzzword, but Nick, I think you, um, your experience um, is a good one that sometimes you have to see it to understand how powerful this is. And, you know, being able to do, you know, an entire professional domain software development um, really for the first time using only natural language. Um, so I can dive in and uh, yeah. we'll, make, we'll make up an example. <laughs> seeing, seeing is believing in, I, I think, this instance and, and with a lot of technology, um, especially as we get into this agentic AI future where it's almost incomprehensible, the capabilities of these models. So that's why we wanted to do a live demo for this audience, um, keep you ahead of the curve. So when someone comes up to you in a few months from now and says, can you believe what you can do with these coding agents? You can tell them you've already made several apps and you're a vibe coding uh, savant. So Frank, let's, let's do this. All right. Um, I think a fun one to see also just how these coding agents have improved over time. But about a year ago, I had kind of my first aha experience, which was, you know, reading a an AI blog and um, the, the author is talking about how speaking is three times faster on average than typing. Uh, but a common problem with speech to text models is one, they're kind of built on legacy predictive AI technology that doesn't understand full context of what you're saying. Uh, and two, we're not always as exact in how we're speaking out loud with uh, how we uh, would type because you're usually have more thinking time when you're typing. And so he built his own application to basically go speech to text to LLM to um, auto format uh, and basically make it much faster to work on emails or, or do whatever, you know, consistent, um, uh, activity you have. So, uh, I'm going to go on to replit.com right now and go to their coding agent and basically say, uh, build me a website that records my voice. I'm going to tell it to use the OpenAI API. And then edits the text output into a, let's say, clear and concise email format um, using the GPT-4.1 API. Uh, Actually, let's just say open it and see what it picks. Um, So this is super simple. Um, We're going to see click start building and let the agent get to work. Um, And what it's doing right now and how kind of a full coding agent is different from what you might have seen in ChatGPT or other AI assistants where you're really just asking it to write code. Replit is backed by a full cloud-based development environment. Um, So this is a server uh, with Python libraries, a variety of coding libraries available to it. Uh, And it's 
understanding my question, creating a roadmap or a plan for um, exactly what needs to be built. I just wrote one sentence here, so there's not a lot. So it's expanding on my concept, thinking about what frameworks it wants to use outside of what I already told it. Um, and then it's going to actually start, once I confirm that plan, writing all the code to build my application. And it will actually build a preview of what it's going to look like as it's doing it. Um, so this is kind of real-time web development uh, and uh, creating a fully interactive uh, application versus just writing a piece of code that, you know, a year ago you'd have to copy and run somewhere else, uh, which is, uh, it sounds small, but for a non-developer, not having a native development environment, it's kind of impossible. So you could write right. code, but not do much with it. Right. My experience, I, you know, wouldn't understand or know which development environment to choose from. So having it all in one place, I think it helps the non-technical um, uh, potential user, someone without any coding experience, which I would bucket myself in, um, to be able to use these tools in a way that, again, it you can only really describe it in, in using it. And that's, I think, this is probably my favorite part of the experience when it comes back to you and offers other potential ideas related to your initial prompt. And I, I think, Frank, you said, oh, this is a pretty uh, easier, um, like, beginner level prompt, but you have APIs here. Some may not know what that is. So there's, you know, a lot of interconnectedness, um, but you really can prompt this tool, Replit, VO, Bolt, any one of the, the coding agents with as simple of a prompt as you can think, or as complex of a prompt as, you know, a, a developer at a company might might think of. So that's that's why I think it is so powerful and in, in what its capability is, because it introduces an entirely new market to coding that, you know, it would have taken you having to learn computer science in college to get up to speed, to be able to do even the most basic of tasks um, or take YouTube classes, whatever it might be. You need a level of, of knowledge to just even understand what a coding environment is. All of this abstracts away that knowledge in a way that makes this extremely user friendly to people that have never coded before. And that I think is powerful and we'll get into it later, but Frank, wanna, wanna explain what's going on right now? Yeah, so the um, the coding agent, um, if, you're, if you're looking at the screen share as you know, thinking through uh, how it's going to implement this application, it's already created a super simple, honestly, this one's kind of ugly, sometimes they're prettier, but a super simple UI that basically has a voice record button and then it shows a formatted email output um, based on the prompt that we gave it. Uh, it also popped up, and this I think is pretty interesting from a creativity standpoint with suggested features, where you can just one click add a feature, like for example, different email templates based on my context um, to add to the application. Um, and so it basically builds this front end first after it's done its planning, and then it goes in and writes all the code to add the on the back end, which is really like, the functionality. Um, so going out to the OpenAI API uh, to both use their speech to text model, which is called Whisper, uh, and then use probably um, a GPT-4 uh, LLM uh, to, to do all the formatting for us. Um, so sometimes this takes some time. Uh, there's, a, there's an interesting trade-off here between speed and quality. The Replit agent used to be faster, but lower quality. And I think um, you know, getting feature complete applications in one shot, people are willing to wait. Um, so they've updated to be a little bit more slower, a little bit uh, more thorough uh, to get a, a, a better, more complete output. Um, and Frank, while this while this continues to run in the background, maybe let's talk through some of the implications of what we think this means to the global economy, to, you know, what is happening here? Because when I start to think about the potential um, of, of coding agents in the wild, you know, my mind starts racing because I've had a million startup ideas over the years and they always come back to, well, you know, I don't know how to create a website or I don't know how to create an application. And I think a lot of people may fall into that bucket of, I have a great idea, but I don't know where to get started because I'm not technical in the way that I might need to be for this certain type of business activity. But now you can get a MVP, you can get a, a product in the wild in, in, in less than five minutes if it's a simple enough prompt. And to me, that explosion of potential creation for businesses, for, for entrepreneurs, I mean, it just seems like we're 
entering an inflection point that has not yet been understood by the market. Yeah, totally agree. And I can go through kind of some of the implications as it's like about to start running this app for us. Um, and I'll go through three different levels. One is generally AI as a tool to increase productivity uh, and create and enable new businesses and new new creative concepts in the market. Uh, there's a billion knowledge workers in the world, and they all use software today to get their job done. Uh, and we create software to increase the knowledge workers' productivity. You now have the ability to create software to fit into all of these nooks and crannies where it may not have been economical to create a dedicated software application for before. Uh, so you're basically expanding the amount of software that can be created with this, uh, I think pretty dramatically, obviously, as we're showing here. Uh, and then also the type of user that's now able to create software is not an engineer that's taking business requirements from the actual operational or business team and having to understand how to translate those requirements into a functional application. And there's, especially if you've worked on either side of this as a, as a business user or a developer, there's always a communication mismatch and, a, and a, an amount of iteration. And, you know, the best developers or technical business users are the ones that can bridge that gap. Uh, but now you have the kind of end users, the end employees able to uh, create software to fill their own needs. And these don't have to be, you know, massive enterprise applications, but just small utilities to make uh, your job easier. They know the requirements the best. They know the problem that needs to be solved. And they're now enabled to create their own solutions for it versus having to go out to an engineering team and wait to get a product into a roadmap that takes two years to actually get built out if it does at all. Um, and so I think, you know, when we look at the TAM and the market sizing, there's estimated to be about 28 million professional developers worldwide. Uh, and interesting, there's 150 million that have GitHub accounts, which shows you how many people have, you know, toyed around with software development, used it in college, but don't use it professionally. Um, the TAM goes way beyond that when you get to coding assistance to or, or agentic coding agents um, of, of really a billion knowledge workers. So from 28 million or 150 million, depending on which size you pick, to really the world's uh, in, uh, knowledge work labor base. Um, and to give you a sense of how many people are using these tools right now, uh, Replit, I think the agent is growing, you know, very quickly on their platform. They have about 30 million users total. GitHub Copilot, which is GitHub's coding agent, really the first coding assistant or coding agent that was released all the way back in 2021, or it's only four years ago, but it feels like all the way back. Uh, that has about 15 million users right now and has been growing 4x year on year. So one of the fastest growing categories in AI. I actually, and just, in, I mean, I love every bit of that, but I would actually say, and I was thinking about this over the weekend, I actually do believe that the TAM is not just a billion knowledge workers, it's the entire connected internet, as in anyone who is connected and has the ability to use one of these coding agents, it now unlocks your creativity and your ability to become technical. Because even the term knowledge worker, right? What does coding agents or what does generative AI do to an individual? What well, gives them knowledge that they that would have taken maybe years to, to have to then be able to build something off of it, right? It now brings that. So really it comes down to anyone with an idea that may need a coding agent or may need some technical expertise now gets that from either a coding agent or just one of these generalized chatbots, which I think is so powerful. It expands the TAM dramatically. It makes everyone in the world that has connection to the internet a potential knowledge worker. And I think that, again, it's like you start to picture and paint that out for five, 10 years down the road. I think we just get into this massive boon of economic online activity because people are going to be coming up with new and creative ideas that they may have always had, but never had the ability to actually execute on. And now they do have the ability to execute on it. And that's yeah. really where this, this, you know, intersection happens. Yeah, totally agree. And two points to continue on to that before we do a demo of the app that's just been built. Um, one is that I think, you know, when you talk about general assistance, like a chat GPT, for example, many people will be creating and, and running code and not even knowing it because this is already happening in the background where if you have a request, like it's analyzing an image or going through an Excel file, chat GPT and, and, and the other um, um, 
AI assistants as well, a lot of times they're running code on the back end uh, to process your request either more accurately or do analytics that an LLM normally couldn't do. So there should be a lot of people writing and running code that they don't even know it's happening on the back end right. uh, for them. And then uh, broader implications for, I think, the software market. This creates a ton of demand in new pockets and potentially reduces demand in existing pockets. Uh, and those new pockets are all the products and services to actually interact with coding agents and the core compute resources that they demand. So AI accelerated compute, databases, web servers, uh, the cybersecurity software for all these new applications that are going to go into production. Uh, we think demand is marginally, not even marginally, it already has been shifting into these new buckets. And then if you think of especially narrow, isolated software application solutions that can now be obviated with a single prompt, <laughs> Uh, much more of a dicey, precarious position. Right. Um, but before we talk more, maybe we should see if this actually works. Um, yeah. I don't know if it will. Um, so, all right, I'm going to click the record button um, and pretend to create an email. Hey, Nick, this is a test of the new Whisper email editor that we created live on the Brainstorm demo. Um, we should create a marketing plan to share this out broadly on our social channels. Thanks, Frank. Moment of truth. Yeah. Drum roll, <laughs> please. <laughs> All right. Looks pretty good to me. Subject, testing the new Whisper email editor and marketing plan. Yeah, so it's it's added all the you know typical email formatting. I would make this prettier for a few ways, like taking out the HTML tags, um, and you can edit. I didn't ask for this, but the ability to edit and then copy directly to your clipboard, I think, is a nice addition uh, from the. I agent. mean, yeah, and if you're not getting an aha moment from that, then I think you're missing the the forest for the trees. Because just to think about what it would have taken before this was uh, available to everyone. What would we have done? We would have sat down. We would have brainstormed a bit. We would have come up with a memo. We would have found a developer to try and build this. We would have gone back iteration after iteration to get to this. It probably would have taken weeks because you have to vet different developers. We have to come up with all of these different ideas. It's going to cost you thousands of dollars to maybe get something that looks like that. And Frank, the kicker is, right, that prompt, the first prompt or every prompt only costs, what, 25 cents with Replit? So you think about it, you just took weeks off of development time. You allow iteration on the fly. And it, this is costing you, what, less than a dollar fifty? Like, this is the the value menu at McDonald's. I, I just, it, it's like, it, it's like, this is the dollar menu at McDonald's in a way that I, I just don't think, unless you see this, unless you watch it, um, you can really understand because, you know, that's a great idea that, you know, people may want to have on their phone to be able to, and, and we just created it live on this show. Well, and you just made a great point as well, or you're getting to a great point, which is Replit supports one click deployments of the apps that you create. So I can, I could publish that right now and send a URL to Nick or our entire team and they can start using it, um, in minutes. Uh, and, and that's, that's something that's just a simple thing that we just created, but that could save time on every email that our entire team is writing. Um, right. That, you know, you create potentially, you know, minutes or hours of savings for the team uh, in less than 20 minutes of, of mostly talking while the agent does its work. Yeah. So everyone, everyone that's listening, watching, you all have homework. Uh, I know we hate homework, but everyone should go test one of these tools out. Just play around with it. If you ever had an idea that you wanted to tinker around with but didn't have the technical capability, guess what? You have it. You have it right now. You have it right here. Um, it's at your fingertips. It doesn't cost a lot of money. You can get free tokens. They'll give you, you know, free prompts um, on any of these just to play around to see, you know, to believe yourself, right? Maybe we had pre-planned that. We didn't, um, you know, pre-recorded that. No, that did not happen. That was live. I can promise you that, but believe it for yourself. Go use one of these tools um, and check it out and let us know in the comments. I think it would be really fun to see what people were able to create. And, um, you know, we look forward to hearing your feedback um, as always, but wanted to thank everyone. Frank, thank you for coming on. Sam, we missed you if you're listening or watching from the side, but I know you're using these tools. So um, thank you everyone.